one of the first civilizations on Earth, the Sumerians, united and settled in ancient southern Mesopotamia present-day southern and central Iraq around 3500 BC. Like most ancient civilizations, the Sumerians came to believe that almost every earthly phenomenon, anthropological aspect, and astronomical event was somehow controlled by unseen deities. This led to the emergence of more than 3,000 Sumerian gods and goddesses. Over the millennia the Sumerians branched out into the Akkadian and later Babylonian people, with the basic mythology undergoing both minor and major changes. While most religions today are firmly rooted in the idea of an eternal god that transcends the very concept of time, the Sumerians believed that their primary gods were derived from the union between the goddess Namu, the Sumerian goddess of that what was thought to be the primordial sea or salt water pools, and her partnering her, who was not a deity but the personification of what was supposed to be an underground ocean of fresh water called Abzu or Apsu. These entities gave birth to an the god of the sky, and Ki, who represented the earth. The Human Nature of the Sumerian Gods One of the most striking examples of Sumerian religion differing from modern religion is the purely human nature of the ancient Mesopotamian gods. Sumerian myth dictates that while almost every Sumerian god was a powerful being with supernatural abilities at his disposal, he was far from the type of omnipotent supreme deities we are accustomed to thanks to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. No deity in the Sumerian pantheon of gods was above making mistakes, and these errors and lapses in judgment were often seen as parabolic lessons. Furthermore, these deities were depicted as either human in appearance or at least anthropomorphic. They also needed food, water, and shelter, much like the people who worshipped them. However, they were gigantic in size and made people feel physical anxiety and fear if they looked at them. However, it was not only their powers that separated them from humans. Members of the Mesopotamian pantheon were mortal, and while above the underworld, had an aura around them called Melamu, which was described as a glow that instantly distinguished them from ordinary mortals. Furthermore, they were supposed to lead quiet lives and at best be treated as whimsical overlords, eerily present just out of sight and sound as temperamental overseers of humans. There was no fair system of karmic give and take as appeared in later religions. The average Mesopotamian god could grant a difficult wish or take a life as he wished, even if the person in question was a devout worshipper and a good person. Such inconsistencies were also common in terms of what a god was for, with many gods in charge of one aspect of the cosmos and the powers of one deity changing over time. The pantheon of Sumerian gods and goddesses was vast, as it numbered more than 3,000 gods and goddesses. But of this vast group, a few stand out for their importance to Sumerian religion and mythology. Namu, the goddess of the primordial sea. One of the most highly regarded female deities in early Mesopotamian religion, Namugu gave birth to An and Ki, the gods of heaven and earth. She was the embodiment of the primordial sea, which played an important role in the creation of the world, and was also considered a mother goddess. The symbol that denotes her name is the same as that used to denote Inger, her mate, and the personification of the mythical underground freshwater ocean known as Abzu. Namo is believed to have had greater significance in earlier times, but as there is no written record of these times, this cannot be said with certainty. In later times, Inger was essentially superseded by Enki, the Sumerian god of water, wisdom, the waters and crafts, whom we will meet later. One version of the myth has it that when Enlil proposed the idea of creating humans to Namu, she told him that she could create such beings with the help of Enki, who was also her son. Another version attributes the idea to Namu herself. Either way, she went on to seek Enki's help to create a clay figurine in the image of the gods themselves. She then turned it into a living, breathing human with the help of seven goddesses, including Ninma, who played the role of midwife. An, the god of heaven. An, the Sumerian deity who ruled the heavens, 
was the most important god and the most important deity in religion as a whole. Despite his position in the mythological hierarchy of ancient Sumer, almost no visual depictions of him survive, and written ones are obscure and inconsistent. The only consistent aspect of all visual depictions is his symbol, which represented a horn hat. The sky or sky god was also the patron god of the city of Uruk. He was essentially the supreme lord of all gods and mortals according to Mesopotamian religion. It is believed that An was both brother and husband to Ki, the earth goddess, and at some points was considered the de facto father of all creation. In some cases he is signified as the husband of Namo, and took control of the heavens and separated heaven from earth when Enlil stood between him and Ki, allowing the creation of the universe. Unlike the modern notion of heaven, the Sumerian sky essentially represented the heavens where certain gods dwelt. These included the aforementioned god of Er Enlil, the goddess of Er Ninlil, the moon god Nana, and the sun god Utu. His other children, depending on the version of the myth, were Enki, Nikikurga, Nidaba, Baba, and even Inanna and Kamarbi. The highest echelon of gods in Sumerian religion was known as Anunnaki. The group consisted of seven gods, An, Enlil, Enki, Ki slash Ninhursig, Nana, Utu, and Inanna. Ki, Goddess of the Earth Named after the Earth herself, Ki is a direct descendant of Namu. Together with An, she created some of the planet's vegetation, and also gave birth to Enlil and the other gods known as the Anunnaki. After the first of these separated her from An, he remained on Earth to rule her domain. She later married her son Enlil, and the two went on to create all the plants and animals on the planet. At some point she was also Enki's wife and had three children, Ninurta, Ashji, and Panajangara. Although she is mentioned at length in Sumerian myths, some doubt her status as a deity, as there are few mentions of her in ancient records. There was also no cult formed to worship her, and she is said to be the same entity as the goddesses Ninma, Ninhursig, and Nintu, among others. According to an ancient seal, she is depicted as a woman with long arms wearing traditional clothing and a horn helmet. Whether a deity or not, she played an important role in the creation of the universe as well as of humans and human civilization. Her temples have been found at Nippur, Mari, and several other places under different names. Enlil, the God of Air Enlil should not need much introduction by now. The god of air, rain, storms, and even the earth, and Lil may have created life by mating with his mother, but he later married the goddess Ninlil, from whom he gave birth to the gods Ninurta, Nana, and Utu, among others. The patron deity of the city of Nippur was given the names Father, Creator, Lord, Great Mountain, Raging Storm, and King of Foreign Lands. And Lil's importance was immense as he was believed to be the being who granted kingship to kings and the power behind most aspects of the universe. In fact, legends tell how he had Nana and Utu light up the sky after being displeased with the darkness in his heavenly home. The clash in the tone of his names is no exception. Numerous ancient texts simultaneously describe him as an aggressive, antagonistic god, while others record him as a kind, friendly, and benevolent being who protected the Sumerians. The latter descriptions are supported by the account of how Enlil and Enki ordered the gods Labar and Ashnan to go to earth to give its inhabitants cattle and grain. Followers of the cult of his name worshipped him at the Temple of Iker, a word that translates roughly as mountain home. The ruins of the temple still stand today. A small statuette of Enlil has been found in Nippur, depicting him as a bearded man seated on a throne. Although Enlil's symbol was a crown with horns, no horns are visible in this case, although this is probably the result of millennia of damage. Enki, god of water, wisdom, arts, crafts, male fertility and magic. One of the four gods credited with creation, Enki is primarily a god of fresh water and is believed to have filled the Tigris and Euphrates rivers with water and sea dwellers. As a result, he was depicted visually as a bearded man in typical clothing of the time, wearing a horned cap, seated, with streams flowing and fish around him. Unlike most great gods, Enki did not live in heaven, on earth, or in the lower world. 
He lived in Abzu. Inky's main wife was Ki, but in this case she was always called Ninhursig. He also had relations with Damkina, as well as Ninsur and Ninkora, who were his daughters. He was also the father of three other children, Marduk, Uchu, and Ninti. Although some other gods had a relatively larger share of support, as far as the extant records attest, Inki's contribution to the legends was perhaps as significant, if not greater. Engaging in all kinds of knowledge, arts, crafts, spells, and incantations, Enki later known as the god he was involved in almost all mental aspects of life in ancient Mesopotamia. In fact, Sumerian poetry mentions that he was deeply concerned with human civilization as a whole. As patron god of the city of Eridu, Enki's task was to endow the ruler of the country with knowledge, skill, and intelligence. However, he was far from independent, as his actions were almost entirely dictated by Enlil, with Enki being something of an agent of execution. Unlike Enlil, however, Enki almost always treated people well, seeming wiser and more peaceful than his master. According to some sources, not Enki but Abzu himself was revered by the people of Eridu as the personification of fresh water supplies. In the age of the ancient Sumerians, the foundations of civilization developed that shaped the trajectory of human history. Their mythology created a variety of gods and goddesses who ruled the world around them. The legacy of the Sumerians carries with it the idea of interaction between deities and humans that permeates today's beliefs. The Sumerians remind us that beliefs and cultural nuances are a collective product of time, space, and the inner world of man. Even in the distant past, they pursued knowledge and practiced their beliefs, creating an invasion of gods who dictated the order of life. Their story is an exciting journey in search of truth and meaning that shaped the foundations of our own human soul. Inanna, the gods of passion, creation, and conflict. In the annals of ancient Mesopotamia, while Namu might have once held a loftier position in the spiritual hierarchy, Inanna's influence as a goddess is unparalleled. She stands out not just in Mesopotamian lore, but also among the pantheon of deities from various ancient cultures. Inanna's dominion spanned over aspects of feminine fertility, romantic love, procreation, and even warfare. She was a force of both creation and destruction, bestowing her favors generously when appeased. Born to Enlil and sharing her lineage with Utu, her twin. She also had a sister named Dereshkigal, the overseer of the underworld. Inanna's influence was particularly strong in Uruk, where she later took on the identity of Ishtar in Babylonian narratives. Her prominence was also felt in places like Agade and Nineveh. A pivotal chapter in her legend revolves around her tumultuous relationship with Dumuzi, the deity of shepherds. Their tale is one of passion and tragedy with Inanna inadvertently leading to Dumuzi's downfall. Legend has it that she permitted underworld spirits to seize him due to his perceived indifference to her own journey into the abyss. Yet, her heart wasn't devoid of compassion. She later permitted Dumuzi to ascend to the heavens for half the year, though this came at the cost of his sister taking his place in the underworld for that duration. This narrative encapsulates the essence of Inanna, a being of desire, power, and retribution. She was believed to guide her chosen monarch into battle, manifesting as the planet Venus, either as the dawn's harbinger or the dusk sentinel. Consequently, her emblem was often depicted as a star, with either six or eight points. The periodic disappearance of Venus, owing to its proximity to the sun, led the Sumerians to associate the planet's dual appearances with Inanna's multifaceted nature. Ancient artifacts from the era portray Inanna as a formidable figure, armed and ready, donning a horn headdress, wings, and with a lion at her feet, tethered by a leash. It's also believed that she laid down a series of rules that became the foundation for the region's legal and social norms. Yeresh Kigal, ruler of the underworld's depths. In the intricate tapestry of Sumerian legends, there exists a realm far removed from the vibrancy of life, the netherworld, also referred to as Kigal or Kala. This shadowy domain, the gloomiest among the four planes of Sumerian belief, was a haven for spirits, deities, and the departed. 
At the helm of this somber kingdom stood Eresh Gigal, the embodiment of mortality and melancholy. She shared her throne with Nurgle, a deity symbolizing war, mortality, and affliction. Eresh Gigal's relationship with her younger sibling, Inanna, was tumultuous, to say the least. While Inanna was a beacon of life and energy, Eresh Gigal was the unyielding monarch of the Abyss ensuring that none could depart her realm without a substitute taking their place. In a daring venture, Inanna descended into the netherworld, but Eresh Gigal, ever the vigilant ruler, ensured that her sister was divested of her garments and transformed into a lifeless form as she traversed the seven ominous gates of this underworld. Yet, Inanna, ever the strategist, had foreseen potential perils. She had entrusted her aide, Nenshuber, with the task of seeking divine intervention should she fail to return. While deities like Nana and Enlil remained indifferent to her plight, the ever-resourceful Enki devised a plan to rescue Inanna. But the laws of the netherworld are unyielding. A life for a life. In a twist of fate, Inanna's choice for her replacement was none other than Umuzi, whom she felt hadn't grieved her absence adequately. Gula the luminary of healing in ancient Mesopotamia. In the rich tapestry of Sumerian deities, while some cast shadows over the land, others brought light and hope. Enter Gula, the radiant goddess of restoration and well-being. Known by a myriad of names, including Ninasina, Nintanuga, Ninkrik, and Meme, Gula was celebrated as the divine protector of healers. Ancient artifacts suggest she was equipped with an array of medical tools, from precision scalpels to herbal concoctions and wound dressings. The identity of her consort remains a topic of debate among historians. Was it Ninorda, the fierce god of warfare, or perhaps Sabu, the deity of flora? Whichever the case, her lineage boasted of healing prowess. She was the mother to Damu and Dinazu, both revered as deities of restoration. Notably, Damu was also believed to possess the unique ability to ward off malevolent spirits, a trait celebrated in numerous Sumerian verses. But Gula's divine influence wasn't limited to the realm of humans. She was also venerated as the guardian of canines and various creatures. This reverence is etched in history, with carvings of her alongside a loyal canine companion on boundary stones from that era. As time progressed, especially during the nascent days of Babylon, Gula's prominence soared, establishing her as the paramount deity of healing for the civilization. While Lema was the epicenter of her worship, her influence radiated to cities like Adab, Nippur, Lagash, Uruk, and Ur. The grandeur of her temples, notably Esabad and Egelma, stands as a testament to her esteemed position in ancient Mesopotamia. Nana, the luminous deity of the night sky, in a departure from the normal celestial veneration seen in cultures such as the ancient Egyptians or Aztecs, the Sumerians had the moon first and foremost, worshipping Nana, also called Sin, as their primary astral deity. Born from the union of the gods of the atmosphere, Enlil and Ninlil, Nana was the beacon that illuminated the night canvas. Legend tells of a three-layered sky, each layer of which was made of precious material, enveloping the flat earth realm. In her celestial artistry, Nana adorns this vast space with stars and celestial bodies. Together with his consort Ningal, he created the radiant Inanna and her twin, the sun deity Utu. Intriguingly, Enlil, in his divine wisdom, orchestrated the union of Nana and Ningal. Nana's relationship is not limited to the cosmos. He was also revered as the protector of cattle, a symbolic connection being made between their crescent-shaped horns and the facies of the moon. His divine lineage extended even further, with Nusu, the deity of flames, being one of his descendants. It was believed that Nana, like his son Utu, possessed an all-seeing perspective, giving him the role of moral arbiter. A significant Sumerian city treated Nana with particular respect. Its main sanctuary, the Ikishnugal, has witnessed numerous reconstructions under various monarchs. Other architectural tributes to it include the Temple of Korigalzuai and the towering ziggurat of Ilugalgasiza. The worship of Nana was unique, with the king's daughters serving as his priestesses, living in a special building known as the Jipper. 
Some sects even elevated Nana to the top of their divine hierarchy. Iconographically, he is often depicted as a regal figure, seated authoritatively against the backdrop of the iconic crescent moon. As we look at these ancient accounts, we can't help but ask, what led the Sumerians to place the moon at the center of their cosmic reverence? And what other mysteries are yet to be solved by the annals of history? Yufu, the bright guardian of justice and order. Incarnate as the radiant sun, UTU is as constant as daylight, illuminating the world with his steadfast radiance. His celestial influence is not limited to the heavens. He plays a key role in nourishing the earth, aiding the growth of flora with his nurturing rays. Featuring bladed and fiery rays, UTU's appearance sets him apart from other revered deities in the region. Born of Nana and sharing a bond with his twin Inanna, the reverence for UTU, intriguingly, does not match the fervor directed at other Sumerian deities. In later eras, he is identified as Shamash. UTU's exalted position in heaven gave him an unparalleled perspective, making him the guardian of truth and justice. Unlike many of his divine counterparts, who often embodied a mixture of virtues and vices, UTU was a beacon of steadfast righteousness. He championed the cause of justice, protected the virtuous, and dispelled malice. From this solar deity descended his daughter Mamlu, who ruled over the mysterious realm of dreams. As for places of worship, Sippur stands out with the grand temple known as the White House, dedicated to UTU. In our enlightening journey through the annals of Sumerian mythology, we traverse the vast landscapes of celestial reverence, from the radiant sun god UTU to the luminous moon deity Nana, and enter deep into the shadowy regions ruled by Resh Giggle. These tales, rich in symbolism and cultural significance, offer a window into the spiritual and moral fabric of ancient Mesopotamian societies. While the tales of gods like Gula and Inanna are imbued with historical reverence, they also prompt us to ask questions and speculate. How did these beliefs shape the daily life and moral compass of the Sumerians? Were there deeper, perhaps cosmic truths embedded in these myths? As with many other ancient civilizations, the line between fact and folklore is enticingly blurred, prompting us to approach these stories with a mixture of curiosity and skepticism. As we stand at the crossroads of history and mystery, one thing is certain, the stories of the past continue to illuminate our present, challenging our perceptions and fueling our quest for knowledge. If you liked the video, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel.